Hello, Andrew Wolf here. In this video, I'm going to everything that I discuss here will introduce here will be discussed more in depth in in uh, future videos. Okay, so let's start talking about the different functions of the kidneys. Now, the function that everybody thinks about when we think about the renal system is the excretion of waste, and the kidneys excrete um, a number of water soluble wastes including urea, which is a breakdown product of proteins. Um, and we'll talk about in the GI system, we'll talk about the urea cycle and how amino acids are broken down as a um, way to, uh, to rid the body of free amino acids, which can be dangerous to cells. Um, creatinine, which is a breakdown product of creatine, which is a uh, way that the muscles use to store energy. Um, and uric acid, which is a breakdown product of DNA, or nucleic acids. And then bilirubin, which we've discussed in depth in some other systems, and we'll discuss more when we talk about the GI tract. Bilirubin is obviously um, from the breakdown of hemoglobin and then various other soluble metabolites. And so these could be from hormones or um, paracrine chemicals from, uh, from within the body or from drugs. Okay, so this is of course what people think of first when they think about the functions of the renal system. But there are many other functions that are very, very important. The kidneys have an important role in controlling volume status. And by controlling volume status, it has a significant effect on cardiac output and blood pressure. And remember, cardiac output is equal to stroke volume times heart rate. And obviously, um, by controlling volume, we're controlling stroke volume by in increasing preload um, to the heart. Now, how does it do this? Well, it does this through the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. And this is nicely abbreviated RAAS. And the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, it, we'll talk about in depth, but its major role is um, to increase blood volume and thereby increase blood pressure. Now, another important role is the regulation of electrolyte balance. The kidneys play the central role in providing um, balance, tight, tight control over the um, balance of sodium and potassium, chloride and phosphorus and other electrolytes in the body. And it does this by selective selectively excreting or reabsorbing these electrolytes to maintain a homeostasis. Similarly, the kidneys have a central role in regulating pH. And it does this similar to electrolytes by reabsorbing variable amounts, reabsorbing or excreting variable amounts of hydrogen ions versus bicarbonate ions. Um, and again, we'll talk about this more in depth. Um, and then there are the secretion of hormones. And we talked about one, which is renin, part of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Hormone synthesis and secretion. 
So renin is one of them. And then, of course, when we talked in the hematological system, we talked about the other, which is erythropoietin. And I'm just going to abbreviate it as EPO. So it's erythropoietin and then renin, which initiates the activity of the, of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And then last, which I think is often forgotten by folks, is that the kidneys have a active role in gluconeogenesis. Now typically, now gluconeogenesis is the creation of new glucose from other substrates. And typically we think of the liver as playing the primary role here, but the kidneys have the potential to make nearly as much new glucose as the liver does. And the process is a little bit different in the kidneys. First of all, it the kidneys only make glucose from protein substrates. And secondly, um, it only initiates gluconeogenesis in states of metabolic acidosis or starvation. Okay. So these are six different functions of the kidney. Again, excretion is the you know, major one that everyone thinks of, and control of volume is second, electrolyte balance, pH balance, hormone secretion, and last but not least, gluconeogenesis. Okay, so we will talk about each of these in more depth, other than I'm not going to go into much more depth with gluconeogenesis, but I will talk about all the others in much more depth um, in um, future videos. If you want quick and easy access to these videos, please click on this link here. I'll make a link to the channel. And as always, I invite you to leave comments um, and ask me questions, and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you very much.